Okay, hello, welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to show you the live footage of the game that I played in which I played genuinely what I think is the most awesome move I have ever played. The computer's favorite move, something outrageous, sacrificial, you'll see in the game. But just before we get into it, I am very lucky to announce that this is a sponsored video. Okay, okay, Night C3. I didn't protect my night, no! But I did protect my internet traffic with Atlas VPN. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the description below. Let's say I want to watch Attack on Titan. I search it up on UK Netflix and it's not there. What's going on? I go on Atlas VPN, select Italy. My little superhero guy pushes the thing over go back search it again and bang there it is attack on titan ready to watch not only can you watch your favorite shows with atlas vpn but they encrypt and protect your data to stop these little spiky people getting their grubby hands on it the hackers the government etc once again that is 199 per month link in description go and check it out okay hello welcome back to another game of chess today playing the move e4 as per usual my opponent pre-moves a Scandinavian defense. Okay, of course we're gonna play the blunder on move two. D4 here, the Black Mar D Magambit. Uh, knight to C3 here, attacking this E4 pawn. Our opponent probably will play knight to F6. They go for F5, which is a really interesting way of holding on to this pawn. Actually, we play F3 here, and if they take, uh, we can recapture with the knight. Here we go, and we've got a super active position and the, the movement of F5. I mean, maybe you can argue that it does claim some kind of central space here that allows the knight to develop uh, more flexibly behind it. But bishop c4, immediately hopping onto this diagonal, trying to exploit that. My opponent, of course, goes e6, trying to close it up. Uh, it seems it seems reasonable. So, castle and kingside, get the rook onto the open file. We've got two knights and a bishop developed. My opponent is going to have a hard time developing their uh, light square bishop at least i'm thinking bishop g5 will be a very useful pin to enact maybe even uh, we get to play the move knight to e5 but with this gambit um in this position against you know f5 here then after they take and take we get some really really fluid play i mean the bishops uh can come out super quick um as you're seeing knight p5 knight takes pawn takes Wait a second, what if I just play, oh, I don't know, and then like rook, rook e1, I'm thinking I take this, open this up and like give a check here, that does seem to make a lot of sense to me, this seems like, I mean, my opponent is drastically behind in development um, in this position, obviously they're up the pawn for it, so that's kind of fine, but to move the same piece again and not make any effort to develop anything else uh, or even get closer to being castled seems to be, you know, principally speaking, a bad idea. Now, we just have to find the actual, you know, objective way to punish this move, which I'm assuming isn't great. And it could be knight takes. Pawn takes is forced. Rook e1. Bishop e7. I don't know, maybe, maybe they're just fine after bishop e7. Oh, no, wait, no, no, bishop g5. Yeah, this should be winning for me. I think we take this. I think we take this and we go... Rook e1, the king is opened up. If you move the king, that's just an admission that you've completely messed up here. Um, and the king will be okay, yeah. My point was that if they block with the bishop, I go bishop g, sorry, bishop g5 here, uh, attack the bishop. It's attacked with the rook and the um, dark square bishop. Uh, they probably have to go like knight here to defend it, but then we could continue applying pressure and that pin would not be pleasant. But they go with a king here, which I, I really doubt is a good move. Um, I'm seeing them trying to sneak into here and walking into this checkmate. I mean, obviously the queen defends for now, but should I go for check with the knight like this or check with the knight like this? That is my question. I'm thinking knight g5. Okay, okay, we can have some fun here. The king's in a bad place. Let's uh, let's exploit it. So I guess knight g5, but knight e5 just looks so pleasant, but then it shuts off the e file. And I feel like I might want that. So we're going to go for knight g5 check. If the king walks into here, it's going to be so susceptible uh, to how weak this diagonal is, controlled by my knight, and hopefully soon to be my bishop, uh, if we can get away with taking this pawn here. 
Mm. If, if we do see King G8, we do. Oh my god. I could play a move like Rook to E8, which looks crazy. Um, I don't know if it's actually good, but the Queen cannot take, importantly. But maybe it can. Because then it defends E6 as well, so then Bishop takes. Bishop E6, his Knight takes. Oh, I still kind of think that would be good for me if Rook E8 and Queen takes. So if Rook E8 and Queen doesn't take, do I have anything that's actually at all exciting? Maybe I just go Queen to H5, but then G6? And G6 seems like a move my opponent wants to play anyway. Um, I, the problem is this bishop's hanging. We could go, you know, queen e2 and the bishop just hangs. Okay, let's just, let's keep calculating this because this is fun. Rook e8. If the queen steps up, well, I mean, what can it do? Maybe if it goes to f6, then we can take here. The queen has to stay attached to this pawn. So it has one, two options. Now, if rook e8, queen to d7, what is my follow-up? Do I like take this bishop? You know, I'm just gonna do it. Rook e8, because why not? It just look at look at how ridiculous this move is. It just has to be good. I mean, you've got to sometimes just have absolutely blind faith in your pieces, uh, develop them, and trust them to do the work for you, as Paul Morphy uh, would say. So yeah, I mean, they move the queen up, and I mean, I I, I can take this, but then I lose this. But then, I, I mean, I could I could play takes here with check. Queen has to take. And then I could take on here. And we, we seem to be winning a pawn in that variation. I just really, there's got to be something cool. I can't believe this rook is actually sitting on, uh, on e8 right now. So takes, queen takes, rook takes here. This does seem very strong. I can play rook takes here because if queen takes, there's the same problem of just checkmate along here. But if rook takes, pawn takes bishop. And then I'm not so sure. Then I maybe have queen f3. And if the queen takes my rook, I just go here and mate. Okay, you know what? We are going to go. We're going to play bishop takes pawn. I think this. I think this makes sense. Queen has to take. Then we can pick up this bishop here. My pawn is held. My knight is held. My rook is just mo the most ridiculous position that I've ever seen it. Wait, but now I'm going to play c3. <laughs> c3. My rook's completely hanging, but if you take it, I play queen b3 check, queen e6, and queen to e6 checkmate, which is ridiculous. My opponent cannot even play h6 and get some luff, get some breathing space for the king. They play g6, I was going to say because this would be mate, but we can give this check anyway. The king comes up here, or maybe I go check. Okay, this has to be the move. I should probably pause and calculate, but why would I when look at the state of this? This is brilliant. This is awesome. This is so cool. Um, I could even take on b7. Protect the rook and threaten this rook here. And threaten the knight. Oh. But then what about check? I've got to keep going after this king, surely. Check here. You can't step into the path of the queen, because then I do some discovery. Pick up the queen, probably. And that's all good. You go here. You have to go to f6, right? Oh my god, check. This is this is absolutely nuts. I don't like rook e8. Was this was this? I'm so excited to analyze this. Rook e8, queen here takes 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 force, and then queen back. Just I mean you're not threatening to take my rook after c3, and then your king is just like the, the bishop's immobilized. The rook can't move. They've resigned. Let's look at this game. What a game. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Now, it says that I had one inaccuracy, one mistake, and one blunder. But as we all know, that blunder was the second move. E4, D5, and then here, the intentional but most beautiful blunder um, that the Lee Chess engine will shout at me for is D4 here. Uh, 
the Black Mardima Gambit. If we turn on the book here, as you see, Black Mardima Gambit. This is played 275 times in the Masters database, far more prevalently in the uh, normal chess database. If we go back and look at the percentage, um, you know, that is not too bad. It's, okay, actually, 1.2%. No one's playing this. People should be playing this. Anyway, um, we see... Let's just get rid of the database, sorry. We see e4, d5, d4 takes knight to c3 and then f5 is played which it says is inaccuracy this is just a way to play against it though this is the netherlands variation okay um and here i should play bishop f4 but or f3 is equally good um and after takes which is a mistake wow it's really a mistake to do that i guess there's no point in playing f5 if you're just going to take here but we take knight takes and we're actually better here despite being down the pawn uh, the knight developed here, as I said, bishop c4 there, best move, um, as you can see, getting on this diagonal. And then, yeah, my opponent, again, needed to start catching up with the development. They go for e6, which is fine. I castle, then bang, blunder. I I mean, this, this is really awesome because I deduced that this was a blunder before I really saw the actual idea. Because of the chess principles, that is, you know, when you're behind on development, don't move the only piece you have developed again. Um... When something violates an opening principle, generally speaking, there's a way you can objectively punish it. I should have saw this, uh, or rather should have seen this, far more quickly. Um, this whole, like, rookie one, bishop g5 idea. In fact, let's check that. So after I took, which I should have taken the bishop. Although, actually, it's going to load and then not care. Okay, doesn't care. Uh, pawn takes. Okay, rook e1. King f7 is actually the best move. Are you joking? Because if the bishop goes here... Yeah, bishop g5, as I said. And then you can defend with the knight. Knight to e5, what? If you take here, there's discovery and I win the queen. Okay, sorry about that. That is nuts. But they go for king f7, of course. Knight g5 check, best move. And they go back here. You're kidding. You are joking. That is the best move I've ever played. That is the best move I've ever... Look at this. Rook to e8. I just did it because it was fun. The point is, of course, for those of you that weren't quite getting in the video, if they take here, we go check. Um, and then the bishop blocks here, and we take with the knight. And the king can't move. We are going to do some discovery here. If the queen tries to block the discovery, uh, we can go. It wants queen f3, but I was just thinking to play knight here. Uh, the queen is pinned, and to win this. Um, and, I mean, I didn't, to be honest, I saw this and thought, okay, I don't even really need to calculate. There's just going to be some discovery with almost certain mate. Um, if they try and create some luft here, and look at this, knight g5, queen here, and checkmate. That's crazy. So yeah, rook to e1 here. Actually the greatest move I've ever played. And then uh, taking this straight away would have been better. I was deliberating for a while between taking this and taking on here with the bishop. But I took on here with the bishop. Uh, and after queen takes, I then took the bishop, which is great. They should have played h6. Instead I played c3, which the computer likes. The computer took a while to agree with me, but obviously... I'm three steps ahead of Stockfish at all times. C3, uh, just opening up this diagonal. That's just a beautiful move. In response to your rook being attacked, you should completely ignore it and play just a passive pawn move uh, but with a venomous idea that if takes, there is queen here and then, you know, the queen would block and this would be checkmate. Um, and then what, what happened? We saw this and there is now mate in 12, I believe, or the computer disagrees now. Okay, queen to b3. Uh, king goes up to g7 and knight e6 which it was recommending, but now says it's a mistake. The computer is so confused about what's going on. I had rook c7, because if takes, then there's check, and I'm in the queen. But my uh, my argument was that knight e6, if the king moves to here, I can... I was thinking to go here, actually, and then just take the queen. But uh, if the king goes to f6, I was going to go bishop g5, force the king to here, and then look at this mate. We've got check, king g7, check again, king goes back here, we pick up the rook. This is ridiculous. Takes, takes with check. King goes back. We take here. They take the rook. Check here. Checkmate. I mean, what a game. They resigned, uh, unfortunately, because that would have been very fun to play out. But they say this is a mistake, even though, oh, I guess there was because there was this like mate in 14. We don't care about that. We don't treat that as a mistake. It is plus 18.2. Um, if I can't win that, I don't deserve to be playing chess. But what a game. Look at that one sec. Let me just go back because rook to e8 here. Awesome stuff. Just making the most of this king, this beautifully placed knight. If you enjoyed, 
like, comment, subscribe, uh, anything to help out the algorithm. I really appreciate all your support. Um, this was genuinely one of my favorite games that I think I've ever played. So yeah, I hope this video does relatively well. Um, and yeah, those of you in the comments regularly, I see you. Thank you so much for consistently being there and supporting. Um, trying to make my chess YouTube dreams come true. I very much appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you for putting up with a sponsorship video, obviously chasing the bag out here. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. See you in the next one. Goodbye.